clearly something drastic went wrong and you know mistakes were made that night and it's important that people take responsibility for that. There's someone waving the line, can you not help them? The firefighters were placed from start to finish in an utterly impossible position because nobody had planned for that type of fire. Had that stay put policy been changed with within minutes as the fire took hold in the building, then, you know, there'd be so many more people here today. Is there a plan B to stay put? No. Fire Brigade. Yeah, hello, hi, in the fire, flood 16 Greenfield Tower. The Fire Brigade were there in minutes. Fire! But as flames took hold of the building... Go, go! ..people inside were told to stay in their homes. Wow. What's your memory of that night being told to stay put in a burning building? I remember it, but it's something that I try not to think about too much. There's a family there, there's a family, there's kids. <laughs> Natasha Elcock was on the 11th floor with her partner and six-year-old daughter. She called 999 repeatedly and again and again she's told to stay put. For me, I have my own personal regrets about that night, um, mainly because I subjected my family to four hours of watching that building burn. If I think about why I stayed where I did when I was told to stay where I was, it was because for as long as I've been alive, you know, the fire brigade know what they're doing. That was my thought process. My thought process is they're the ones that are in charge, you know, they're the ones that are in control. They're the ones that are gonna do what they're supposed to do. And that's not saying that they didn't, because obviously I was rescued. However, clearly something drastic went wrong. At Grenfell, the London Fire Brigade used the tried and tested policy of stay put. They'd used it for decades, but here it didn't work. 72 people lost their lives in the fire, because when stay put goes wrong, there's no alternative. Is there a plan B to stay put? No, there's not really a, a plan B for stay put. On the night, everyone, in our views, was in an impossible position because there was no alternative plan. But more than two years after the deadliest fire since the Second World War, nothing has changed. Some firefighters showed remarkable bravery that night, but collectively, the London Fire Brigade was bound by a policy that simply didn't work in the tower. Inside Grenfell, temperatures reached up to a thousand degrees. And while residents were told to stay put, it later emerged that the London Fire Brigade had never trained to evacuate a high-rise building. No. Oh my God. With no plan B at Grenfell and stuck on the 11th floor, Natasha Elcock came up with an idea that might have saved her life and that of her family. She flooded her flat by running the taps. Do you think how clever that was to keep your family alive? I don't see it as clever. I, I, it was a reaction that I took. I, to this day, I still don't know why. It definitely kept the house damp. And with the addition to the firefighters being able to spray water up on that side of the building. But yeah, that action, I won't say necessarily saved my life, but it helped. The stay put tactic used at Grenfell is not a London Fire Brigade policy is actually set by the National Fire Chiefs Council. And it has its roots back in the middle of the last century. Back in the 50s, there was a fire in Canada where a couple of people were killed. They decided it was better if people could be stayed in their apartments. ITV News has discovered the first mention of the stay put policy in the UK. The 1962 British Standard Code of Practice states the assumption should no longer be made that buildings must be evacuated if a fire occurs. In a high-rise building like Grenfell that only has a narrow single staircase, the stay put theory avoids a stampede and gives firefighters room to work. And how useful is stay put? It's been incredibly good over the years. Um, it's, it has worked very, very well um, as long as the rules upon which it's based have been in place. What happens when it goes wrong? Uh, as far as I can tell, there isn't a coherent plan for what happens when it goes wrong. I've not heard of, a, of any formal plan B. How worrying is that? I would, I would be worried. 
if I lived in, in, above the second floor of a building, I would be worried. After the Grenfell fire, an inquiry was set up. Among its aims, to look at the adequacy of fire regulations and safety measures currently in place. But more than two years since Sir Martin Moore Bick was put in charge, the inquiry has yet to make a single recommendation. How comfortable are you that stay put has not changed or been reviewed in two years? There needs to be a huge review in stay put, um, especially when fire buildings have materials on them that will make fire spread. You know, two firemen did come and rescue my family and I will be grateful for that. However, had that stay put policy been changed within minutes, then, you know, there'd be so many more people here today. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's hearing. Yes, Mr. Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today we're going the to inquiry hear... did hear six months of testimony. I swear by Almighty God. From the London Fire Brigade and I first responders. I'm um, sort of distressed on the lady's face, and I just thought. It also took evidence from residents and fire experts. Yet there's been no official change to the stay put policy. At the moment, certainly it isn't extinct because it is the, the, the only plan. But now the only plan is ignored. At this fire embarking, no one stayed put. Luckily, there were no injuries here. This timber construction building in Worcester Park, southwest London, had a stay put policy. It went up in flames in minutes, but all residents evacuated before the fire brigade even arrived. That's unbelievable. And more recently in Hackney, another building with no communal fire alarm. People outside shouted and honked their horns to help evacuate the burning block. What I'm hearing from housing associations is that actually, uh, if there's a fire in a building, the residents just all evacuate anyway. At the Grenfell inquiry, lawyers for survivors and bereaved have called for an end to stay put. We are suggesting a reversal of that policy. In other words, that the emphasis is put on get out and stay out. They put, even if that's the advice that's being given, given what everybody saw, I don't think anyone would ever take any notice of it now. So it's a, it's a defunct policy, really. You know, who would stay in their home and rely or wait or do as they're told in this instance? It has to be changed. It has to be changed. It can't be something that remains in place because, you know, it, it had, in my view, a detrimental effect on so many families. The London Fire Brigade declined to take part in this programme, but in a statement they said, if a fire breaks out in another part of your building and you are not affected by fire, our advice is that it's generally safer to stay within your flat unless conditions change. The National Fire Chiefs Council, who are responsible for the policy, added, stay put is a building strategy and is sound if buildings are built and maintained properly. Even without a plan B for stay put, residential blocks like Grenfell still lack basic safety features. In all the recent fires, none had sprinklers or even a communal fire alarm. It's incredible to think that after the worst domestic fire in recent history, fire safety has not improved. If anything on stay put, it's become more confused. On a wall near the tower are the names of those who died at Grenfell. A stark reminder, if one were needed, of lives lost and the need for change. <laughs>